Hi everyone and welcome back. So we've been talking about cell division and in this case we're going to talk about a specific type of cell division, right? Of course it couldn't just be simple. There couldn't just be plain old only one way to do cell division. This is a type of cell division called mitosis and it's a little more complicated because it's used by some complicated cells, the eukaryotes, right? Eukaryotes are cell types that you and I have. So we're larger, we're more complex, we have organelles, yada yada. The other type of cell division that we looked at so far, mainly things like binary fission, are used by prokaryotes. So things like bacteria and archaea. They don't have as many things that we have in our cell bodies. Like we have, again, organelles and they don't have so much of that. They have some ribosomes. They have a single tiny chromosome that they is circular, so it's very easy for them to divide. But we being eukaryotes, we love to keep duplicated DNA. It's what allowed us to change it, gain mutations, evolve, and get all of this complexity. And it's quite complicated sorting that out when we need to make a new copy of the cell. But it's not just that we use one type of cell division. We use a couple, right? This is just one of them. And specifically, this one is an asexual form, okay? So it means that we're making identical cloned cells, exact copies of each other. And we use these for maybe repairing tissues, replacing damaged cells, uh, maybe also, oh, of course, growing, getting larger. So since this is pretty complex, I'm going to walk you through the steps of mitosis, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the cell cycle. This is not mitosis right this is not mitosis is actually just this tiny little cake slice right here that is mitosis okay so this is the mitotic phase but this whole air this whole circle is actually what we call the cell cycle cycle okay and this is really kind of like the life cycle of the cell all right and here's how you can kind of think of it all right, here's like the day the cell was born, right? So the original mother cell split into two daughter cells during mitosis, as you can see is happening here. So after they split, here goes, you know, one of the daughter cells, and then one of the daughter cells, this is the one we're gonna follow, is gonna enter this life cycle, the cell cycle, right? Not all cells do the entire cell cycle that you see here. So many cells, like neurons, for example, uh, stay right about here for the most part in what we call first gap, G1 or gap one phase, okay? So gap one phase is just a cell living. They're not interested in having baby cells. They're not gonna divide. They're cool. So this is like neurons, right? They're born before you, they'll die after you, and they have very little interest in actually dividing. And that's okay. But because we need to study cell division, we have to look at cell types that are going to go through the cell cycle. So what happens is we start looking at cells that, you know, they live, they grow, they get big, they do their functions, and then they decide they need to, for whatever reason, through quorum sensing usually, or cell signaling, they need to go undergo cell division. So they enter the S phase right here. This is S phase. It's the DNA Synthesis, see what we did there with the S? Yeah, we did that. Okay, synthesis phase. So I want you to look at the difference between the cell in the S phase and the cell in the G1 phase. The cell in the S phase has like a little bit darker nucleus. The reason is because we're packing it with a whole new second copy of the genome, right? So there's a duplicated genome being uh, synthesized or manufactured in there. Okay, so now we've doubled that, so it's a little heavier. The other thing I want you to notice is that the cytoplasm is actually taking up a little bit more square footage. Well, I guess not exactly footage, but a little more real estate in there. Okay, and the reason is because we're packing it full of organelles that are going to be supportive during this process. We're actually also just packing it full of cytoplasm, things we need for the cell division process. We need to have cells be about the right size and have the right materials in so that after they divide, each of the daughter cells will be healthy. Okay, they'll be ready to grow. There are checkpoints, which we'll talk about in other videos right here and here, which manage the cell cycle. Okay, so these cell cycle checkpoints make sure that we don't have too many cells. 
all right? And they also make sure that we do the steps leading up to cell division or mitosis in eukaryotes correctly. So the second one we look at is the gap two phase, right? So this one, we're definitely getting larger. The chromosomes are about ready to start really condensing and we're going to enter mitotic phase. So that is mitosis, that little tiny cake slice right there. Mitosis, which we're gonna look at in detail because there's tons of steps actually and it, and it kind of changes a little over time, uh, at least in terms of what we understand about it. So mitosis is the process which we're gonna take that single cell and we're gonna split it into two daughter cells. All right, and then eventually we'll shore up with cytokinesis at the very end. The true splitting of the cell into two new cells as they begin their life as individuals. All right, let's take a look. Things to know, at least for right now, uh, and the year right now is 2018, so this is like 2018, 2019 stuff. Um, at least for right now, we have these phases. Now, this could change. So if this becomes a little bit older video, uh, you just, you know, just let me know if there's a change and I'll update it for sure. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth phase, right? The sixth kind of step to the process, which is actually out on its own. So mitosis technically has five stages, prophase, pro-metaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And now, telophase and cytokinesis have always been a little bit tricky to tell apart. Uh, so we'll talk about how that works in, in, in just a bit when we actually get some pictures and it's easier to understand. Okay, so remember interphase? We just went through that whole cell cycle. That entire S1, you know, sorry, G1, S phase, there's no S1 phase, there's only S phase, G2 phase, that's all interphase. So that's like, remember, the lion's share of the cycle is interphase, and only that tiny little bit is mitotic phase. So basically, we kind of look at it in this way. So we have the cell, we have a nuclear envelope, we have this chromatin see like the DNA is relatively unwound for the most part okay we have our little centrosomes are centralized right so they're just budding off in one single area sometimes they're in the process of actually developing two so here's what it looks like if you saw it under a microscope so this blue is the nucleus it's a stain we usually it's probably dappy at least that's what we used and it looks the same um, and then over here, these are some of the side. Oh, well, we should probably use green, right? Because they're green. Okay, so these like green filaments here, and these red filaments here. These are cytoskeleton. Uh, so cy cytoskeletal elements. The big ones are the green ones. Okay, so these are things like microtubules and intermediate filaments. They're pretty large, and the smaller ones are generally like the actin filaments. And you thought a cytoskeleton was probably going to be like a human skeleton, right? You only have a couple hundred bones, right? Well, when it comes to the cytoskeleton, there's a lot of material there. Okay, so as you can see, it's centralized. You know, here's the little nucleus and all this. Okay, so um, other things to note. Let's do this one. Uh, let's see if I can change a color. Hold on. Just bear with me, people. I thought I could change a color. They can't. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, we can. Okay, good. Okay, so nuclear envelope. So this like little pink circle right here, I want you to kind of pay attention to this a lot. That's one is a really important structure to keep an eye on too. So the nuclear envelope, always know whether or not it's there in pieces or not there. Okay, because we're going to have to take the DNA out of the single original nucleus and switch it to other sides of the cells, and then we have to rebuild the nuclear envelope. So that's another important part of our process. So I wanna take a minute here just to talk about all the little organelles and other things that are probably you know, floating around inside the cell, and, and we talked about all of these in some of our other videos, but um, I just don't want you to think that they're not there. It's just for mitosis, when we're talking about it in this level of class, we're just looking at basically how we move the DNA around. It's been a lot of work trying to figure this out. So, again, there's still organelles in there. We're just looking at these specific structures. 
Okay. Prophase. So prophase is this one here, the first one, right? Prophase is the first phase. That makes sense. So a few things are happening. Number one, we have some condensed chromosomes. Look at that. So they've condensed down. They're nice and tightly bundled. They're packaged is how you want to think of it. So these chromosomes have been, we'll look at this in some other videos, wound around histones. Let's see if I can just draw you histone. Okay. So we have these little, I'm like kind of, they're like this, right? This is a histone and they usually are in, in sets of eight. Okay, like an octamer of histones. And so basically what happens is the DNA, which will be here in red, wraps around it like twice. Okay, so two times the DNA wraps around the histone, okay? And it's kind of like a cord bundler, basically. And so we get a bunch of these histones all together, all of these octamers, and it allows us to really nicely pack down and protect, which is very important, our DNA so that we don't have a whole bunch of new mutations or tears or especially breaks when we start splitting up the DNA. All right, so we're packaged. The other thing I want you to take a look at is over here, our centrosomes, right? Our centrosomes start migrating. They're trying to get to the poles, you know, like the North Pole and South Pole of the planet. So these are trying to get to the North Pole and the South Pole of the cells. And they make something. They make a little spindle here. And we call this the mitotic spindle because you really only see it during mitosis. It's gonna be important later on. Another thing I want you to pay attention to, we still have a nuclear envelope. It's still there, okay? So prophase still has it. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're in prometaphase. Prometaphase is kind of neat. So prometaphase, we have all of the chromosomes are condensed, but I want you to take a look here. Okay, now the nuclear envelope is fragmented, right? So even up here, you can see we don't have this like tight little bundle that we had in prophase. See, tight little ball. All those, all the chromosomes are kept in together. Highly organized. Well, now it's, it's been dissolved, so we have these fragments, and even less, so it's dissolving. Okay? The other thing that's important to look at is that mitotic spindle. So now we have polarized centrosomes, and that mitotic spindle is now sticking its fingers all the way through where all of those chromosomes are. So here it is up here on the actual live image. So you can see these fingers reaching out onto the chromosomes, right? So that's important. And they're gonna attach at what we call the kinetochore. So the kinetochore is right here. It's like a belt buckle at the centromere, right? Which is the waist of each one of these chromosome sets. Okay, so one of these mitotic spindles will come down and grab that kinetochore belt buckle at the waist or the centromere of the chromosomes. That's how metaphase, or I'm sorry, prometaphase goes. So let's take a look at what's next. All right, metaphase. Metaphase is really nice because it's, it's, it's got this nice plate that you're gonna use quite often. Hold on, let's change this color. Change it. Can we change it? Nope, we're not going to change it. All right, here we go. And it's the metaphase plate. You know, when you're, I give you pictures of stuff of all these cells, and I say, what phase is this cell in? Is it metaphase, prometaphase, anaphase? Here's the trick for metaphase. It's going to line up on the metaphase plate. Like, look at this. So you can imagine that right here on the actual cell image, all these kinetochores are grabbed onto. And then these are just, you know, the wiggly ends of the chromosomes sticking out, but they're all in the center. So they're in the metaphase plate. And the mitotic spindle now is very tight, very organized. Look at how thick and dense it is. It is telling exactly each one of those little chromosomes where to line up. It means business here. Other things that are gone? Still no nuclear envelope. Nowhere to be found, okay? All right, so this is metaphase, and this can take a while. You can sit in metaphase for, you know, like a couple
couple minutes up to like 20 minutes, I believe, in some cell types. But the next phase is actually a very fast phase, okay? And it's anaphase. And anaphase means back, right? It's the back phase. And so what happens is this really cool thing, and it happens in a split second too. So these spindle fibers, these mitotic spindle fibers, are going to pull at the kinetic horse and actually separate right down the middle all of the chromosomes, pulling them back to either side of the cell, right? So you can imagine that this is going to be the area used for cell number one, and this is going to be the area that's going to be used for cell number two, right? So it makes sense that now we've split that genome that we duplicated during S phase, right? So it's pretty fast. The other thing that's kind of nice about anaphase and trying to remember it is uh, when you look at it, the chromosomes all kind of look like A's, right? Like they're all in the A shape. You can almost draw like an A in them. So anaphase. So hopefully that's a little helpful. The other thing that starts to happen is the early elongation of that cell. Okay, we're going to start getting ready to divide. So it's another feature, not always immediately apparent, but somewhat apparent. Other things that are kind of interesting to look at is how dense, oh, that doesn't help, red on red. That's weird how dense a lot of these actin filaments are starting to get over here in the cells, right? So they're preparing for their new life in their new cell. The last set of phases we look at here is telophase, which means end, right? End phase. And then cytokinesis is cell movement, right? So this is a tricky one for a lot of folks. So here's telophase. You can recognize telophase because all of a sudden, look at all the mitotic spindle fibers. There are actually a lot of them in the middle, right? So there's still some up here at the poles, but there's a lot in the middle because they're placing each one of these groups of chromosomes, right? Each one of these genomes in their new position in the center of the cell. Right? They're the heavy movers. Remember, the cytoskeleton is not just the bones of the cell, but the muscle, too. So that's important. Um, other things to note, you'll start seeing that that uh, nuclear envelope starts showing back up again. Hey, there it is. Right? So it's, it's showing back up. It's still a little fragmented because it's forming, but it begins to start establishing itself. Okay? And also, we have some other things. So we have these retractions right here, right? So this is, this is where the cell starts kind of pulling itself in on the side. You can even see almost these dips happening here, okay? It makes it look like a figure eight. And what this is, this is called the cleavage furrow, like cleaver, like a meat cleaver, I guess. It's gonna like cleave the cell right through that line. It's a little scary. But there it is, okay. Um, so it's going to cleave the cell right through that line. So telophase, this last phase, takes a while. We reestablish these cells, we give them their own nuclear envelopes, we start reforming those, and the second we, we move from telophase to cytokinesis is like, like this moment. Here's the moment where we are literally closed off here and the cells push away to begin their new life as new daughter cells. Okay, so that is the cytokinesis moment. So let's talk about a few differences. Um, you know, when we talk about the kingdoms and stuff, uh, and we talk about, you know, plant cells versus animal cells, so these are old divisions in eukaryota, plant cells have established quite a different uh, evolutionary scheme and part of it includes having a cell wall right so we looked at this in some of the videos that talked about organelles okay nice ones not the ones I did the nice ones anyway so plant cells have this cell wall that borders the inside you know the outside of their cell here's a plant cell in here the little plant cell and what happens when we go through cell division in plants is you actually have to make a cell wall as your final structure, okay? And so something has to happen in order to generate it. And also, primarily, we look at how it separates these two nascent or newly formed cells. So what happens is the formation of a cell plate. 
we drop little vesicles containing cell wall material, just air drop them right down into this center region. And they are able to start growing outward from the edges, actually, and uh, that's how they divide their total content. So I have a picture, let me show you. So like here's an actual picture of two, you know, so here they, they just divided, right? Here's a cell, here's a cell. And so whereas the cleavage furrow goes from the outside in, the cell plate moves from the inside out, okay? And that's how it solidifies its final structure. So that's the cell plate. Here's like the little vesicle getting dropped off in the center and then we make a cell plate and then we have final fusion of the cell wall and the daughter cells are officially undergone through uh, cytokinesis. All right, well that's kind of it for right now and I hope that was helpful. Um, I've posted some other videos that illustrate it quite nicely through animation, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great night.